Jason noticed the two women approaching him, and he threw away the cigarette without hesitation. He gave them a bright smile. Allie looked back and forth between him and Madison. He was staring at Madison. She looked just as she had before at school. She was unbelievably beautiful and always wore bright and warm colors. When she smiled, there were two small dimples on her cheeks. Simple, harmless, and innocent. He could say all those words about her without the fear of exaggerating. But then he had seen her standing beside Ian in that pink dress, and he had been shocked. Evidently, he didn't know her as well as he had thought. But all people had many faces, and the one that they wore most often wasn't necessarily a reflection of their real selves. Congratulations, Madison told him. You're the first one of us to become a chief designer. She smiled at him and stretched out her hand for him to shake. He took it deftly. He hadn't thought that the first time they held hands would be like this. This means that we're colleagues now. Remember to take good care of us, she said casually. They had known each other for a long time, and they were good friends. He smiled and nodded, and then he opened his mouth to speak. However, they were interrupted by two familiar people. His first instinct was to turn around and leave, but they had drawn closer, and it was already too late. Madison! A sharp voice rang out. Two very elegant women walked up toward them, seemingly full of ill intentions. It was Claire and Lynn, who had gone out for the day together. They hadn't expected to bump into Madison. Without thinking, they had called out to her and come closer. As the Quinn Gold engagement party had been such a big event, Lynn had found out that Madison's husband was actually Ian Weston. At that moment, her heart had almost collapsed and she was jumping with joy, relieved to find out that the man she liked didn't end up with Claire. Instead, Ian had married a woman who had been criticized by everyone. Even though the situation had also made her uncomfortable, she had reached out to Claire and invited her out for a drink. They finally stood before Madison and Jason. Lynn said, You wretched scum! How dare you seduce Ian! Screw you! She didn't plan on letting her get off lightly. Are you doing the same thing again right now? Did you actually come here to cheat on him with another man? No matter how good Madison was at controlling her temper, she was still angered by Lynn's words. Her brows knitted together as she looked at the obviously drunk woman before her. Please watch what you say. You don't know anything and you're spouting nonsense, she told her. She didn't want to argue with her when she was in this state. She turned to Jason and pulled at his arms, trying to get him to leave. She didn't want him to get caught up in something like this, especially since he had no part in it at all. It just wasn't fair toward him. Lynn saw that she was about to leave and reached out to grab her. Sarcastically, she said, Where are you going? Do you need to find somewhere more private to continue? How could Ian ever marry someone as easy as you? Please watch your tongue, miss. I could sue you for defamation, Jason said, angered. However, this did nothing to deter Lynn. Quite to the contrary, it made her even more arrogant, and she began pestering him. That's hilarious, she laughed and turned to Claire. Did you hear that? She's a prostitute, and her client wants to sue me. <laughs> what a joke. None of them had the chance to recover from her harsh words before she raised her hand and gave Madison a sharp slap across the face leaving a bright red mark. Jason stepped forward, placing himself between the two women. Lynn let out a frustrated yelp. Who the hell do you think you are? Do you think that you can just go around seducing every man you see, Madison? Let me tell you that you disgust me, you tramp. You had to go and climb into Ian's bed just to get into the family. I bet you spent ages planning that, and still you go and sleep with the first man you see, don't you feel any shame? The more Lynn spoke, the more energized she became. Her eyes were wide open and bloodshot. The alcohol had made her face a little red, and she looked scary. You just got lucky, though. If it hadn't been for the conflict between Claire and me back then, you wouldn't have gotten anywhere with Ian. You're so full of yourself. Who do you think you are, you little slut? Madison took it all in, her eyes wide as she stared at the crazy woman before her. As soon as Lynn finished speaking, 
Madison pushed Jason aside without any hesitation and took a step forward. She slapped Lynn and challenged her. You want to know who I think I am? Let me show you. Slap. She slapped Lynn again. Claire stood to the side, watching the interaction with a stunned look on her face. She hadn't expected Madison to actually go and hit someone. You, she said, getting ready to scold her. However, Madison turned toward her. You better shut up, she shouted. I won't have someone as vain as you lecturing me. She managed to stop Claire from speaking with just a sentence. She turned back to Lynn and slowly said, You and your little poodle should go. Don't say that I didn't warn you. You should know that Ian hates women like you. You're just a dog who only knows how to open its mouth and bite people. You should learn to keep your mouth shut and mind your own business, or you'll just end up being alone forever. Who are you calling a dog? Lynn asked, seething. She had recovered from the slaps only to be faced with such disrespectful words. If possible, her anger got even worse. You, I'm calling you a dog who should obey my orders, Madison said indifferently. She turned around to leave, not wanting to hang around two drunk lunatics. You bitch! How dare you! Lynn screeched, rushing forward. She grabbed Madison's hair and dragged her back. Claire leaped forward when she saw Lynn make a move as if to calm the situation. Secretly, however, she wanted Madison to suffer. Jason watched the scene in front of him suddenly get out of control. And for a moment, all he could do was stand and stare at them, dumbfounded. Let go of me, Madison shouted, trying to pull her hair out of Lynn's grip. At the sound of their screams, people began coming out to see what was going on. They gathered around and took out their phones to record. I said let go of me. I'm not willing to fight with you. You better watch out or your family will give you hell when you get home. She couldn't let her reputation be tainted like this. If the Weston family appeared in the headlines the next day because of this scuffle, she would have to deal with a great amount of trouble. Jason seemed to be thinking along the same lines, and he tried to block the crowd's view of her with his body as best as he could. Unfortunately, both Lynn and Claire were wearing so much makeup that they weren't easily recognizable. You came here to seduce this man. I told you to go out and take him as a client, Lynn shouted. She pulled at Madison's hair and lifted her leg to kick her hard. The people surrounding them were speechless. I'm going to kill you. Come on then, show me what you've got. Madison did her best to endure Lynn's assault with Claire stepping in from time to time to push her toward the attacker. Finally, Madison had had enough and aimed to stomp on Claire's foot. She hit her mark, and Claire let out a pained wail. She was lucky that Madison wasn't wearing high heels, or she may have had to say goodbye to her dancing career. Claire fell to the ground and clutched her foot. Madison heaved herself toward Lynn and pulled her to Claire. Lynn stumbled, and Madison managed to free herself from her hold. They were an unstable mess of bodies fighting each other with all their might. There was a rock lying next to a flower tray, and Lynn picked it up. She leaped forward, aiming at Madison's head. At that point, it became too much for the crowd of onlookers, and someone finally decided to call the police. Madison looked at Lynn, who was holding the rock with a crazy look in her eyes. Then, she smashed it against Madison's head. The world before her went black and she lost her balance. She stumbled backward and was caught in a warm embrace. She could feel a muffled groan coming from the person behind her, as well as Lynn's wild roars. It was the summer, and Jason was wearing short sleeves. When Lynn came forward with the rock again, she hit his arm instead of Madison, and blood began pouring out. The people around them quickly stepped forward and pulled Lynn away, keeping them separate while they waited for the police to come. At Mercy Hospital, Ian's phone rang. The caller was an unknown number, and he declined the call. However, the number kept calling, and he eventually decided to pick up. Ian, please save me. A woman cried into the phone, her voice full of panic. My foot is injured. Please help me. I'm scared that I won't be able to dance anymore. Ian was surprised to find that the caller was Claire. Claire.